Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Maribito, also known as A Stranger from Afar, a Japanese horror film from 2004 that was directed by Takashi Shimitsu and stars Shinya Tsukamoto. A photographer witnesses and records a suicide in a public area. Afterward, he becomes obsessed with this event and is determined to feel the same fear that the man felt before dying. After some investigation, he decides to explore the labyrinth of tunnels that extend below the city of Tokyo. When he does this, he frees a beautiful woman who is chained to a rock face and brings her back to his home, and the story moves on from there. Now, this is a remarkably twisted and odd little film with some pretty strong philosophical and psychological concepts. I mean, the narration helps because it provides a lot of thoughtful ideas regarding fear, urban legends, and other topics. It also helps to build a mythos, which some viewers have claimed to be very Lovecraftian, so to speak. Now, I am not familiar, personally, with H.P. Lovecraft's writings, but that will soon change. I recently bought a, uh, like, 1,000-page, like, compilation of Lovecraft's works that I'll probably crack into at some point next year. I'm really looking forward to that, because I've heard his name thrown around for ages, but I've never actually read one of his original works, so I'm... Definitely looking forward to that. However, I have seen other movies that were based on his stuff. Uh, Necronomicon was really good. From Beyond, Reanimator, Color Out of Space, etc. So I am at least somewhat familiar to films based on his works. Now, stylistically, Marabito is completely different from the films that I just mentioned. This film has very little gore, only a little bit of blood and violence in it. You know, it's pretty deliberately paced and kind of creepy. Uh, but we do have references to ancient underground civilizations and species of creatures that are unknown to man. And this film was actually screened at an H.P. Lovecraft film festival at one point. So, obviously, if you're a fan of that guy, you may want to check out Marabito. There are also direct references to some guy named Richard Shaver who I never even heard of before I saw this film for the first time. I thought he was just a fictional character they invented. And then after one of my repeat viewings, or maybe after reading an online review, I, I uh, realized he was like a real guy. So I, uh, I looked him up online, and he had some pretty oddball beliefs that are too outlandish and nuanced to cover in this video. But uh, one of his beliefs in an, uh, an advanced prehistoric race of humanoid creatures, I guess you could call them, lived deep within the earth during ancient times. Uh, that whole little belief system is kind of the skeletal foundations of this film, which is pretty interesting. So there's a lot of odd stuff in this one, and I recommend that you maybe read up on uh, this guy Richard Shaver after you watch the film. And you get almost kind of like a supplement to some of the stuff they're touching upon. So there are a lot of references in this film to like mythologies and kind of weird stuff, which is pretty neat. You don't see this stuff much in like a Japanese film in general. You know, references to other cultural like uh, uh, mythologies that are this bizarre. There's a sequence where our protagonist descends into the tunnel system under the city. And it feels like a like a horrific exploration of the secrets of ancient humanity. Pretty interesting to kind of tag along with this guy, see what he finds. And he does have some interesting discussions along the way as well with people that he meets. Now, the relationship between Tsukamoto's character and the woman he frees and brings to his house, his apartment, has a mix of different elements. Again, very odd. You get like a father-daughter angle at times. You get a scientist-subject angle at times a boyfriend-girlfriend angle at times, possibly, uh, an owner-pet angle at times, and you're, you're kind of uh, flowing between these. And near the end of the film, it becomes a bit more clear which one it is, but it's quite bizarre, but very cool. The woman does not talk at all throughout the film, so the interaction has to be nuanced in terms of physical interaction and mannerisms, and they do a good job. Our protagonist needs to figure out what this girl needs to survive, because she doesn't eat or drink anything. She's like something else, like like unhuman or something. And the fact that you get some complexity to this relationship is an impressive feat by the scriptwriters. Now, in terms of horror, this movie does showcase some freaky images and also a few bloody moments. There's a nice variety. 
you know, um, you know, not a lot of blood, like I said, not a lot of gore, but a little bit. There's a mix of documentary style scares at times. They work well. Very early on, there's a disturbing video clip or a series of them that are shown that works. Sound design is very intense, using ambient sounds that kind of pull a viewer in. Again, very hypnotic stuff. Very creepy film, I would say. So the horror element is visceral enough to satisfy horror fans, I think. And if you pay attention to the details, the psychological horror is amplified. There is some subjectivity in this film in terms of your interpretation of the end of the film. There are a few good uh, interpretation write-ups online, of one of which is on IMDb, actually, in a review. But that could frustrate some viewers who are maybe can't really uh, uh, come to a conclusion for themselves. I liked it because it was a little bit different from a typical horror film. You know, that reveal at the end of like what this true terror is is very unorthodox, and I appreciated that. Sukumoto, an impressive performance as usual. He's a good actor, you know, phenomenal director and quite a good actor. His character here is rather like demented. At one point near the beginning, he says that he would resort to torturing someone if he thought it would help him observe and understand the ultimate level of fear, but he doesn't believe that that's the solution, so he chooses other means for his, uh, you know, I guess, research. And uh, Sukumoto, I mean, he's basically born to play this role. He's, he's really good in this. One other possible negative for some people is that the makeup effects on some of these humanoid creatures, it does look kind of cheap, uh, but they're barely shown at all. You're talking like five seconds of screen time, so it's not a big deal. Uh, the same is true with like the underground territory, which looks a bit odd, uh, you know, so in terms of special effects sometimes. So again, not a big deal. It only occupies a small handful of, of seconds or minutes, right? And they did film Marabito in eight days. This was filmed in eight days. So you're talking a shoestring budget, but it still looks quite good for a film with that budget. So not a, not a big deal if there's some little uh, budgetary constraints there. It's pretty ridiculous that a film this interesting was filmed in eight days. Now, I know some of the more seasoned fans of Japanese horror do place Marabito high on their favorite Shimitsu film lists. A lot of people have this as number one. You know, above all of the, uh, the Juon films, above Reincarnation, all of that stuff. I think, uh, I think Roger Swan ranked it as his number one film back in the day as well. It's probably my second favorite behind Juon the Grudge 2 from 2003. Just, I think that film kind of nailed that whole uh, Unreal Ghost thing so well. But, you know, I, I, I've heard people request and wish that Shimitsu would direct more films like Marabito. And I do kind of agree with that. He has a talent for doing weird films, and I don't, I don't think he gets weird enough in some of his flicks. So it would be nice to see him do something like this again. So if you're going to do a deep dive into Japanese horror cinema, I think Marabito is a must-watch. I mean, I can't imagine some people not liking it, but, you know, because of its oddness and stuff like that, but it, it, it has an art house feel, I would say, at times as well. More concerned with ideas and themes and stuff like that over like a conventional story per se. But it is the most convention, uh, creative film from one of the most popular Japanese horror directors of all time. So you probably should watch it. It is very easy to find on DVD and uh, the American DVD. And it's also available online at voodoo.com. V-U-D-U. -U. And I think it's available for free there. So check it out if you haven't already. I think this one's pretty cool. And as always... We'll see you next time.